Apple finally fixed some of the issues with their iPad Air and they also made a larger size that is actually affordable. So which one should you buy? Because you can get the M1 Air for 399 bucks right now. We'll leave a link in the description. In this video, we're gonna compare everything from the display sizes, the cameras, the speakers, performance, storage speed, and more. So here we have 399, 699, and 799, but we also have that difference in storage. This one right here, I actually upgraded to 256, whereas the previous iPad only started with a 64 gigabyte. This one's a 128 now for the base storage. So I'm really curious about the performance of that. And this iPad right here, I think is gonna be a huge seller. Size wise, we basically have the old 12.9 inch iPad Pro but we have a single camera without LiDAR, which the new iPad Pros also have a single camera. We still have the same 20 watt charger. Let's go ahead and pop this one open right here. And also we have that landscape camera, which we're gonna show you guys the differences. Now, while these are updating, I wanna mention that Apple rates the battery life the same across all of these. Even though the 13 inch has a larger battery, it also has a larger screen, which takes more battery. And the new M2 models have Wi-Fi 6E for faster connectivity, but they also get rid of the micro SIM slot. So it's eSIM only if you wanna get cellular. Now, if you're worried about the 13 inch being too heavy, you definitely do notice a difference in your hand, but it's about a third of a pound heavier. So that's not a massive difference. And the thickness is the same between all three. Now, if you're gonna use a Magic Keyboard, this is where you notice the weight difference. The 13 inch weighs three pounds compared to 11 inch, which is noticeably lighter. But the benefit is you get to use the older Magic Keyboard, which you can buy for about 150 bucks on Amazon. I'll link it down below. Now, if you do a lot of typing, the 13 inch Air has a wider keyboard. The side keycaps are also quite a bit wider than this mini version. Now, you can get used to this keyboard and type really fast, it still feels great but this one does feel more like a real laptop and the trackpads are fairly similar. This one is just slightly deeper, but it's hard to notice. Now, as far as the displays, the M2 Air's display is identical to the M1 Air. It's called an 11 inch now, but it's actually not. If you look at the fine details and specs, the brightness is the same, they are identical. But between these two, the new 13 inch, you guys could see it is so much larger. So if you care about having a large screen, for split screen, for watching videos, you get so much more real estate. You actually get about 25% more screen real estate, even though it's 11 versus 12 inches. And this one has a slightly different aspect ratio, a little bit taller on the keyboard. So you guys could see, I see a lot more going on here. And same thing with the website. So if you are gonna do multitasking and you wanna use the keyboard like a MacBook, I would say go for the 13 inch, but if you wanna use it more often like a tablet, go for the 11. Now, another difference is the display brightness. Both the 11 inchers max out at 500 nits, whereas the 13 goes up to 600, which makes it easier to see in bright environments. And surprisingly, even with higher brightness, it actually has slightly better contrast as well for watching videos. And with that, how do the speakers compare? I'm expecting the two 11 inchers to be very similar or identical but the 13 inch is a lot larger. Now we have speaker grills on all sides. It looks like there's four speakers, but these all have just stereo speakers. So let's go ahead and compare all of these. All right guys, I was not expecting this. The old M1 10.9 inch iPad Air actually has better speakers than the 11 inch M2 iPad Air. It is actually louder. I have no idea why, but the new one is worse. And of course, the 13 inch, Apple said that it's gonna have better bass, but that's not the only thing. Everything is so much louder. And that's why I said, if you're gonna watch a lot of media, man, the 13 inch is the way to go. Now, another thing I noticed 
is the anti-reflectivity coatings. The M2 11 inch Air has better coatings than the M1 10.9 inch, but the 13 inch has quite a bit better anti-reflectivity coatings than the M2 11 inch Air. I don't know why they made it a difference, but it is quite a bit better. And now we have to talk about the Apple Pencils. With the new M2 Airs, you have to buy one of these Apple Pencil Pros. So you cannot use the previous Apple Pencils. Now, thankfully the price stayed the same uh, and we have a lot more new features. We have the cool new design box and let's go ahead and pull this thing out. Now they have, now they look practically identical, but you have to use the new one because of the new centered camera and where the magnets and charging go. So let's go ahead and snap it on to pair. And you guys can see one of these new features. We have the squeeze built in now, and it also has a taptic engine. So let's continue. And it's letting me try squeeze. Okay, that feels really nice. As soon as I press on it, I get a nice haptic feedback. So I know that I enable this menu. And we now have hover with the M2 iPad. So I can select that right here. Let's go ahead and write Max Tech. My handwriting is pretty bad. We also have the new Find My, which is amazing because I've lost these so many times. And as you guys could see, we have the new roll feature. So if you're working with brushes that you're able to roll with, that gives you finer control. Of course, the Apple Pencil 2 still works. You still have the double tap if you wanna switch between two different tools. But if you really care about using the Apple Pencil and drawing, well, having this new menu that just pops up and the extra gestures, it's really nice to have. So if you're just getting into this system, definitely go for the new M2 Air. And now let's compare the cameras. I have the M1 Air right here. I'm looking directly at the screen and what you guys are seeing is me looking off to the side. It's not a great camera angle. That's because it's all the way over here at the side. And if I wanna look at the person I'm talking to or if I'm recording a video, I have to look over right over there. So I'm still offset. Maybe I'd have to sit all the way here. That doesn't look very good. And a lot of people would just take it, rotate it, take it off the keyboard. And this is the new landscape camera in the M2 iPad Airs. So it works out a lot better. I'm typing right now, I can just glance up and look right at the viewer or whoever you're FaceTiming with. So that part of it, it's nice. It also has Smart HDR4 and visibly the video quality looks better. Um, a lot of people think that the cameras are identical, but the actual lens itself is smaller on this one. And you guys go ahead and let me know if the microphones sound any better with the M2 Air compared to the M1. Now, as far as the rear cameras, the hardware is identical. The only difference is Smart HDR3 versus 4. So you guys let me know which one of these photos looked better. And now let's get into performance. The first thing I'm gonna test is the storage speed because we have 64 gig, 128, and 256. Looking at the read speeds, the 64 gig M1 Air is 763 compared to 1620 on the new 128 gig base model. And then the 256 is 1641, not much faster if you upgrade your storage with the M2 Airs. Now, as far as write speed, my goodness, 231 compared to 915. I mean, that's almost four times faster. And then 1479 on a 256 gig model. So that one actually gets quite a bit faster if you upgrade the storage. So that is definitely good to know. And now getting into CPU performance, all three of these have eight gigs of RAM. Let's go ahead and run our CPU benchmark. I don't expect to see a big difference between these because they're not gonna be thermally throttling, but we do have a test for that. And here we go. As far as single core, the M2s are about 10% faster and in terms of multi-core score about 15 percent faster than the m1 now i don't think that is a massive difference in terms of cpu performance but if you're doing very light tasks with low brightness you could get a little bit better battery life because of the new efficiency cores now let's go ahead and compare the graphics performance of course the m2s do have more graphics cores than m1 and here we go we have roughly 27 percent faster graphics performance for metal 
with the M2s and the 13 inches scoring just slightly higher than the 11 and a lot of different compute tasks with iPad OS is run on graphics. So that could be a big difference. But what about gaming performance and throttling? Let's go ahead and close this down. And I'm gonna run 3D Mark's Wildlife Extreme Stress Test. This is gonna run for 20 minutes long and it's gonna record all the data for us to see the real world difference if you're gonna do a long gaming session or very long renders. All right guys, this is very interesting. You guys see we have a ton of data here and just looking at the M1 versus M2 11 inch smaller sizes, we have 20% faster graphics performance on our best loop, but both of them end up slowing down if you guys could see right here. Now the interesting thing is, that the M1 does throttle down a little bit, but after seven minutes, it stays really consistent in terms of performance, whereas the M2, it keeps dipping down all the way to the end. And by the end of the 20 minutes, instead of having a 20% difference, we only have an 8% difference of performance. 3518 versus 3800. So if you're trying to decide between these two and you play games, don't expect a big difference. Now, when we look at the 13 inch M2, it actually gets seven and a half percent better performance at its peak, which is actually 30% faster than the M1, but it is also a lot more consistent in terms of performance. So its lowest score is actually over 11% faster than the 11 inch and about 20 20% faster than the M1 10.9. So if you like to game and you don't mind the larger size, this thing is definitely the one if you want that gaming performance. So to answer the original question, which iPad should you get? Well, if you don't need the Apple Pencil Pro and you don't mind that the camera is on the side and you're looking for a smaller one, I would spend the $399 and get the M1 iPad Air. I think it's still a killer value. But with that said, if you want the larger size, it is the nice device, by far the best one. You can pick it up for $799 with 128 gig. It's great on the keyboard. The speakers and display is really nice. It actually has quite a bit better performance because of the better thermals. Um, this thing is, in my opinion, the most impressive. So if you don't mind the larger size or you want it, I would go for this one. You guys let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. Click that circle above and check out one of those great videos right over there. This has been Max and I'll see you in the next one.